Good morning. Good morning. We'd like to welcome Becca Bean from Unity New York. Thank you so much. It is such a pleasure to be back here with you all this morning. And I just want to take one second before our message begins and ask you to please join me in a moment of prayer as we close our eyes and bring to our mind and heart the memory of the powerful and beautiful Ruth Bader Ginsburg. We salute her in her time of transition and we affirm now with courage and peace of mind that we shall become a credit to her memory. We know this truth together, and so it is. Amen. So I wish you all a very good morning, my friends, on this beautiful and crisp fall day. Thank you so much for choosing to be here with the New Thought Spiritual Center family. Today we continue an amazing exploration of the word acceptance. So I have to tell you my favorite commercial right now is from Citibank. And it shows a guy in a pet store who comes back to make repeated purchases for little toy balls. Using his city card, of course. And then we see the guy in the park with this adorable little dog and he's talking to the dog and showing him the ball and he's so animated. And then he throws the ball as far as it will go and the little dog runs off and comes back with a stick. And the look that goes across the owner's face is absolute perfection. It's priceless. We know that this is a story that's happened over and over again, that there is such love and frustration and confusion and yes, absolute acceptance in this moment. That nothing that the little dog will ever do right or wrong can change their relationship. That this is unconditional accepting love and patience. It's such a great little spot. And I hope you can catch it. It never fails to tickle me and lift my heart, particularly as I prepared for this week's topic. But you know that commercial is only one tiny facet of the ways we can interpret acceptance. Over the past several weeks, we've heard our presidential candidates bravely accept the nominations for the highest offices in our land. And just a couple of days ago, I had an old friend call to say that her daughter had joyfully accepted a proposal of marriage. And on the same day, I got an email from another friend in the midst of accepting a very serious health diagnosis. So many wonderful interpretations of knowledge and some not quite so wonderful. Now, one of the places I frequently associate with the word acceptance is in the serenity prayer. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And of course, acceptance is a cornerstone of the 12-step treatment for alcoholism. And I want to share with you just a little bit of what the big book says about acceptance. It's so clear. I think it will ring true for you as well. It says, when I am disturbed, it is because I find some person, place, thing, or situation, some fact in my life unacceptable to me. And I can find no serenity until I accept that that person, place, thing, or situation is being exactly the way it's supposed to be at this moment. Nothing happens in God's world by mistake. Until I accept alcoholism, I cannot stay sober. Unless I accept life completely on life's terms, I cannot be happy. I need to concentrate not so much on what needs to be changed in the world as on what needs to be changed in me and my attitudes. Now that's some powerful wisdom, isn't it? Just let that sink in for a moment. When a fact in my life is unacceptable, I must accept it exactly how it's supposed to be right now because God doesn't make mistakes. And until I accept it, I can't be happy. I can't move on. I can't grow up. I have to turn away from denial and examine what God wants me to do. I must change my thinking in order to change my life. Acceptance means we're facing reality as it's being presented to us so we can make a decision about how to proceed, how to take action. I like to imagine that that moment or that hour or that day of acceptance is 
a divine moment between our humanity and our divinity, where we literally cross a threshold from denial into a place of freedom where we can open up to God's guidance. In this decision, we see that acceptance is an active process because you can't stay passive when life is sending you signals that all is not well in your relationships, in your work, in your spiritual practice. When we take a moment to observe things like our restlessness, our resistance to change, even our fear, it's unmistakable that these are reminders. It's time to let go and let God. Now, we can mistakenly assume that sometimes accepting something means getting over it. You know, just get over it. Well, this is not the case. Being willing to accept that someone we love has died certainly doesn't mean skipping the grief process or trying to find some contrived silver lining in the midst of sadness. It doesn't mean minimizing the significance of what's happened or how we feel about it. It just means being willing to acknowledge what is without resisting. And sometimes the courage of acceptance means admitting we don't know the answer yet. Maybe there's a situation in your life right now that you really hate. You really want it to be different, but you don't know right now just how to make it happen. Well, my friends, this is where our spiritual tools and principles, particularly prayer and meditation, can come into play. We start by remembering that there is only one presence and one power in the universe and in our lives, God the good, and that as children of God, we are good also, each one of us. With God guiding us, we have the power to co-create our lives through the power of our thoughts. And with prayer and meditation, we align with God and open up to infinite wisdom and love. Here is where we are truly changed, where we fully know the truth that we are loved and cared for, and that God's will for us is to live up to our divine potential and be happy, joyous, and free. So a lot of us have probably asked for certain things in prayer over the years, and hopefully a lot of what we've prayed for has come to pass, and sometimes maybe exactly in the way we imagined it, but just as frequently. There's surely been times when God has sent us a sign that says, no way, or simply left our prayers unanswered, which to me usually means not yet. Be patient. Maybe it's not your turn right now, Becca. Or as an old daily word put it so perfectly from years ago, sometimes life doesn't give you something, not because you don't deserve it, but because you deserve more. When we can accept the reality of what has happened in our lives, and especially when our prayers have gone unanswered, that's a grown-up step to accept that God always knows better and can see so much further than we could. When awful things happen and appear to be the end of the world, I think a lot of us want to naturally start squealing, why me? Oh, Lord, why did this happen right now? Well, thank goodness in our spiritual practice, we know we don't need to waste our spiritual energy in wallowing in self-pity. As our associate minister in the city says so perfectly, when you're walking through the valley of the shadow of death, do not stop and build a condo. Move on. When we are centered in spirit, we can change our thoughts from why me to what next? Lord, show me what to think about this so I will know what to do. Eric Butterworth in Discover the Power Within You reminds us that Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And what is that freedom? It's not licensed to a life without restraint but the inward motivation to tame our raw spiritual power, to harness our divine potential and move in the direction of our highest good. Emily Cady also reminds us that we are so much more. She writes, oh, how in our ignorance we have mistaken and misunderstood God, in consequence of which we are today tiny pygmies, when he wanted to make us giants in love and health and power by manifesting more of himself through us. 
we would not let him because we've been afraid to say, have thy way in me. Manifest thyself through me as thou wilt. Help me get out of my own way and accept God's guidance. A long time ago when I was learning about the idea of accepting my good, it was a little scary, I admit, to let down my guard and think I could ever know that everything really was going to be all right. And no matter what my world looked like right then, that God was in charge and all was well. I think it's equally as challenging when we realize that no one can take our good. If that job I'm applying for is mine, then nothing in this world can prevent me from being hired. And if that person that I'm crazy about is not the love of my life, then nothing can keep us together for very long. You know, I can't help but feel that in our country today, we may be suffering from a lot of fear in that area, not just about jobs or health or love, but the fear that someone or something is just poised to take our good, whatever that means to us individually. My prayer for some time has wanted to focus on that, the idea that everyone must know and trust that their good is assured. So I encourage you in the coming week to take that into your heart and your prayers. Again, we echo Eric Butterworth as he writes, you are both human and divine. There is that in you that can never be hurt, that is always poised and peaceful, that knows your spiritual unity with God and knows that no one can take your good from you. In this state of consciousness, all hurt is healed. The influence of any other person on you is nullified, and you become a healing influence on the world. Serenity through acceptance is a state of calm and peacefulness that we all want to achieve, especially in our world today. As we move into this next busy week and the beautiful fall season beginning, may spirit be in and all around you as you accept God's love and see the truth clearly. I want to round us out today with a wonderful little poem by Persian poet and scholar Rumi. Some of you may be familiar with it. I've loved it for a long time, and I hope it'll inspire your heart this week as you move forward in truth and acceptance. It's entitled, the guest house. This being human is a guest house. Every morning, a new arrival, a joy, a depression, a meanness. Some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Welcome and entertain them all. Even if they're a crowd of sorrows who violently sweep your home empty of its furniture, still, Treat each guest honorably. He may be clearing you out for some new delight. The dark thought, the shame, the malice. Meet them at the door laughing and invite them in. Be grateful for whoever comes because each has been sent as a guide from beyond. And so it is. Amen.